Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Broman, and today I'm going to show you my remote control Arduino spy tank. So I can drive this around remotely while watching a live feed from the camera. The vehicle is based around the Tamiya tracked vehicle chassis kit, but I deviated slightly from the instructions. I have the climbing track set up here with the two wheels in front and the one in back forming this scalene triangle setup. I kept the angle at the front a little bit shallow so that I can more easily climb over large obstacles. And I didn't have enough wheels to fill in this gap in the middle here, so I pulled the tracks pretty tight and hopefully that will keep the tracks from sagging too much when I go over obstacles. On the front of the vehicle is the double drive gearbox, and that did not come with the tracked vehicle chassis kit. The one in the kit was a single gearbox, and that would drive both tracks together, so all you would get was forward and backwards. But the double gearbox allows the tracks to drive independently of each other, and that allows turning motion as well, because a tank turns by stopping one of the treads or running them in opposite directions. So on the back of the double gearbox you can see the motors that power it. And the Adaf Adafruit motor shield usually can't run small 3 volt motors. And these are motors from Adafruit that are supposed to be about 4.5 volts. So they're supposedly a little bit bigger and more easily compatible with the motor shield. I'm not sure if you can see that right there, but I also soldered in a... Let me move the wire. I soldered in a capacitor, and there's one on the other side too, to help with the noise in the motors so that it doesn't feed back into the circuitry back here. I mentioned earlier that this project is controlled by an Arduino, so if I lift up the motor shield, you can see it under there. It's the original Arduino Uno. I know, that's ancient now. Then again, I have had this for about five years. But anyway, the programming port and the power jack are located on the back of the vehicle for easy access. And then on top of the Arduino Uno, I have the Adafruit Motor Shield version 2. The version 1 wasn't all that great. It couldn't run small motors very easily. But this one is a lot better. These new motor driving chips can handle more current, and these motors aren't going to burn them out anytime soon. I had problems with that with version 1. And you can see my little power jack coming out the back of the vehicle and that's going to connect to the battery underneath. I also have the power jack hooked up to the FPV system, which I will discuss a bit later. And on the other side of the motor shield, I attached a small hobby receiver. This will be something that you would find on a remote control airplane or car. And I have that plugged into ports 2, 3, and 4 on the motor shield and Arduino. Don't use ports 0 and 1 for inputting data, because those, once you start the serial monitor, those are used for serial, serial communication with your computer. Yes, yeah, so don't use ports 0 and 1. Oh, and these are the digital ports, not the analog ones. So the receiver is also connected to the 5 volt supply from the board over here. So it's getting its power from the Arduino. And the, I have the little jack connected so that the motor shield can power the Arduino as well. So all the power comes through this jack and then spreads out to the FPV system, to the motors, and to the receiver, and to the Arduino. On the front of the vehicle is the camera that I use to film through. And this is the Mobius Action Cam. 
Mobius has recording capabilities, but it also has a video output out port on the back. And that allows me to stream the video out of Mobius and then beam it back to my controller, where I watch it on a little screen. So Mobius snaps right in there. I have its holder taped to the frame. But then I went a step further and added a tilt system. So the camera can tilt up and down like that. There's a hinge on the back of the platform that allows for the tilting motion. And underneath right here, I have a servo motor that's driving the assembly. And you can see here that the arm of the servo motor is connected by a wire to the frame, the part that's not moving, while the servo motor is connected to the part that does move. So when the arm of the servo motor moves, this area here has to stay a parallelogram. And so the top plate tilts up, therefore tilting the camera up with it. And it can tilt up about that far, and then if the arm were to be rotated anymore, it would start moving it down. I've mentioned the FPV system a few times during this video, and that is located in the middle right here. So the video signal comes out of Mobius, and then this wire loops around back here, it's awfully long, and then it goes into the video transmitter. Now I'm using a 600 milliwatt video transmitter. For indoor use that's a little too powerful. You get signals bouncing everywhere and messing up your video feed. Then as I mentioned before, the power comes out of the power jack through this wire. And then I use cable ties to clean up the wiring here. Then it goes into the video transmitter. This transmitter can accept a really wide range of voltages. So that's good. And the video feed goes in here. And then it comes out the other side as a radio signal through my antenna. Now I have the antenna shielded with a little plastic Easter egg. And that's to prevent the antenna from getting crushed. I'm using what's called a cloverleaf antenna. And that allows for several benefits in transmitting the video signal. I also have the video transmitter velcroed on. The I would have to unplug these power wires to get it off. But that allows me to switch the transmitter between some of my other drones. So I don't have to buy a new one for each of them. So then when I turn the vehicle over, you can see the battery on the bottom. I'm using a 1000 milliamp battery. It's three cells, lithium polymer. I use a little voltmeter that I can clip onto the back. That'll tell me when I'm running out of batteries and need to stop driving and charge it up again. Before you use LiPo batteries, you will want to read up on safety issues regarding them, unless you are already familiar. I turn on my remote control, and then plug in the FPV system control side. Then at the back of the tank, I plug in the power. Then Mobius is already turned on. And the video is showing up on the screen. So you can see me waving my hand. And then I am ready to drive. Instead of the traditional skid steer style steering, where I would use both joysticks and one joystick would correspond to each track, I instead have a single joystick steering method set up. The right joystick is what's controlling the driving. When I push the joystick forward, the tank moves forward, and when I pull it back, it moves back. The further I push it forward, or pull it back, the faster it goes. And then I have the aileron channel on this remote hooked up to the steering. So when I push the stick left, the tank rotates left. And when I push it right, it rotates right. And the joystick on the left, where the throttle and the rudder would be, is what tilts the camera. 
So I have the camera tilt hooked up to the throttle channel. And you can see the image on the screen, the live feed, change as I tilt the camera. So now that I've explained the basics to you, let's have a little fun with this.